Today we're gonna to take a look at this down jacket that I'm modeling for you. It's the Sierra Designs Tuolumne jacket, obviously the men's version, because I'm not a woman. And uh, we're gonna take a look at some features and some specs and compare it to some other jackets that are pretty similar. Uh, and I'm gonna give you my overall thoughts on the jacket. Hey everyone, I hope your day is going well. My name is David Wallman, if you didn't already know that. Uh, and like I said before, we're gonna take a look at this down jacket uh, by Sierra Designs. It just came out roughly two months ago, um, give or take you know, a month. I think it's important to start off this review by kind of clearing up uh, what category this jacket falls under. Um, so when it comes to down jackets, first of all, know that if you type in down jackets online, you're gonna get both down and synthetic. It's kind of a generic term because uh, when you think of down jacket, this is what you envision, regardless of the insulation. So in this case, it's actually synthetic. We'll get there in the tech specs. Um, but uh, as far as down jackets, there's kind of a few different classifications uh, and you have to use the right tools for the job uh, as, as it is with any outdoor gear or any job. If I'm doing gardening in the backyard and I take a hammer and a drill, well, I'm kind of an idiot. Um, so you have to use the right tools for the job. And so I think it's important to go into this review knowing what this jacket is and what it isn't. So first of all, most people would break jackets, down jackets up into kind of three categories. Uh, you kind of have your lightweight, you have your midweight, and you have your heavyweight. This is a lightweight down jacket. So if you are planning on doing some snow adventures where it's, you know, 15 degrees, uh, it would make maybe a good uh, mid layer uh, if you are staying active. But if you're just chilling around camp, uh, I'm gonna say this might not be the right tool for the job. So I think that's important to distinguish. So this is a lightweight down jacket in my opinion. Let's take a quick look at some tech specs. Uh, I know you could just look it up, but to make it easy on you, I'm gonna try and cover that briefly here. So it is a synthetic, it's called the Fireball Synthetic. It's one of uh, Sierra Design's uh, newer synthetic technologies. Uh, they equivalent that to about the 600 fill of their dry down, which is goose down. Um, so it's basically a 600 fill jacket. Uh, it weighs six and a half ounces, which, or sorry, 16 and a half ounces. That would be amazing. 16 and a half ounces, uh, which is a, a little heavier than most jackets in this classification. Um, I'm not, it's not heavy by any means, and I, uh, I think that's probably because they have a few other features that other jackets don't, uh, slash it's also synthetic, not true down. Um, also the fill weight, uh, this is really interesting to me. It's six ounces of fill weight, uh, which is, you know, if you're going off what I just said in the classifications, you're like, that's, oh, that's a midweight jacket. This is not a midweight jacket. Don't confuse that spec. Uh, it is still a lightweight jacket. It's what I would expect. It's what's comparable to the other lightweight jackets. Um, I think the difference is just simply because synthetic doesn't have the same warmth to weight ratio in order to kind of meet spec. Uh, they had to put a little bit more synthetic power in there than what a down would have been. Um, so if this was actually 600 fill down or, or, or higher, um, then it would probably be uh, less fill weight because um, down is just lighter than synthetic. Um, so for it to be equal, uh, it's gonna weigh a little bit more. So they put more uh, synthetic in here, six ounces, not appalled by that, just uh, don't get confused and think it's a midweight jacket, it's not. Um, and then lastly, the shell uh, is 40D, 40 denier, um, which is a little bit thicker of a shell fabric uh, than what a lot of other lightweight jackets are. Most are kind of around 20, um, some even 10, uh, which is getting really thin. Um, but it's a, a great shell material. Um, sadly, mine got snagged, it's not tree proof. Um, I had part of a tree fall on me on my last camping trip and it's got some uh, duct tape patches, where are they? Duct tape patches to add some character to it. Um, but uh, the, the fabric itself is, is great. It comes in multiple different colors. I think gray, red, green, and blue. Um, and then all of them have this yellow interior. Um, uh, so just, just keep that in mind. If you don't like uh, yellow on the inside, well, uh, bummer. 
because um, that's the way it is. Um, I will say that the color on their website uh, seem a little bit brighter than what it actually is. Um, I'll try and color match this as best as I can uh, to be accurate, um, but it's a little bit deeper blue uh, than what their website is. And so uh, I would assume the same with their green and their red. Their red almost looks orange. I bet you it's actually a proper red. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at the colors on their website. They seem a little bit brighter than what's uh, actual. All right, so a few kind of key features about this jacket that I want to cover. First and foremost, that's really obvious, is it's got no hood. Uh, straightforward, just keep that in mind. It's not hidden away or zippered or something. There's no hood on this jacket. Um, so that's important to know. Uh, it has two main pockets. Uh, they are not mountaineer pockets. Um, so if you're wearing this while backpacking or having a climbing belt on, uh, it's probably gonna cover these pockets. Mountaineering pockets, if you don't know, are placed just a little bit higher, almost towards the top of your abs, um, basically so it stays out of the way of your belt uh, or climbing harness. It does have elastic around the uh, hand, um, hand wrist uh, sections, um, which I do think is really important in my opinion. Um, and I'll get to this in the next section, but uh, it seems a little bit uh, better uh, and tighter of a uh, elasticity uh, than some of the other jackets that I've tried, namely like the REI co-op jacket. Um, um, so that's worth noting as well. Also, it does have uh, on the bottom of the jacket, it does have uh, a drawstring, uh, elastic drawstring uh, for the base of the jacket, which I think is really important. If you're, if you're really trying to maximize warmth, um, the whole point is to trap air in. And so if you have a lot of air escaping out the bottom or around the neck, um, then uh, you're, you're losing heat effectively. So having that uh, around the bottom is a nice feature that, um, again, something like the REI Co-op doesn't have. Another key feature is these kangaroo pockets. Um, so it does have internal pockets, also something that the REI Co-op doesn't have. So things for headlamps, flashlights, uh, cliff bars, etc. It actually has, it actually kind of has multiple. Actually, I didn't even realize that. So it's got multiple compartments, actually. There's three on this side and one, two, two on this side. That one's kind of hard to get into, but it does technically have it. So that's interesting. Um, you learn something new every day, even when you're making a review on a jacket. Um, I do want to say as far as the fit, it is a very boxy uh, cut. It is not like um, like a lot of Arc'teryx uh, jackets have a very like slender or tapered fit. Um, this is straight down the side, basically. So as far as competition, uh, I basically looked at five different jackets, three down jackets, two synthetics. Um, and kind of compared uh, fill weights, weights, uh, and largely price point because kind of, uh, spoiler alert, my big takeaway with this jacket is that for the price point of $100, it's an awesome jacket. Um, and you can't necessarily, aside from the REI one, uh, you, you're not gonna get this kind of jacket for the same price point. So that's, that's kind of what I looked at. Um, and so I think you'll see that once I start naming some names. Um, but the REI jacket, REI Co-op jacket is what it's called. Um, I have tried it on uh, both in store and also on the first camping trip I took this one out on. A friend had it. Uh, we switched jackets for 15 minutes or so because I kind of wanted to test it out. Um, and uh, I think I missed the bottom drawstring feature. Um, it didn't have the internal pockets. Uh, the elastic around the wrists were a lot looser um, and didn't tighten as much. Uh, and otherwise, pretty much the same jacket, like it felt just as warm uh, kind of scenario, uh, also hoodless. Um, so very similar, also about $100. This one, uh, like I said, is $100. Currently it was on sale for 75. So what an awesome steal. Um, it really just comes down to the REI one is an actual down, it's a 650 fill. Um, and so it does, it's 10 ounces as well. So it's a six pound or six pounds, six ounces lighter uh, than this jacket. So I think it really just comes down to kind of, do you want some features or do you want the compressibility? Um, and I'm gonna go into compressibility more in a little bit. Um, as far as some other jackets, uh, the Marmot uh, Aries, if I said that right, is $175. Um, and that's, I'm trying to, I was trying to look at cheap jackets that are similar to this, okay? Uh, and that's, that's the next cheapest jacket that I looked at out of the five. Um, 
and there's maybe a few other jackets, but even synthetic jackets were around that price. So again, $100 or $179. Um, some features about the Marmot one is it's a 600 down, which is basically equivalent to this, but it is a true down. It's 15 and a half ounces, which is one ounce less than this one, um, and 3.6 fill. So basically the down version of this jacket, almost to a T for $75 more. Um, so like that should start to give you an idea of why this is awesome. Uh, the OR, uh, the uh, Outdoor Research uh, Transcendent uh, is $199, $200, it's a 650 down, uh, 13 ounces um, uh, in total weight. So again, three ounces less basically um, for $200. Then you've got the, as far as synthetics. So this, this should be kind of more comparable to the synthetic. Patagonia Micro Puff. Uh, very well-known, well-reviewed jacket um, that's 9.2 ounces, so it's uh, a lot lighter uh, than this jacket. It's only 2.3 fill um, and of a synthetic, and they don't say what that equates to. Um, so I don't know if that uh, equates to an 800 fill synthetic or a 600, but it's synthetic, it's only 2.3 fill, okay? For $299, for $300. So three times the amount of this for the same Synthetic jacket, slightly lighter, less fill. So, eh, I haven't tried it. Take it for what it's worth. Again, the Patagonia Nano Puff, which is different, is $250, uh, also synthetic, 13 and a half ounces, uh, and also 2.1 fill. So, possibly uh, not as warm. Again, it depends on their synthetic. Um, but uh, I, I think the, the point here in comparison, again, is this isn't a super crazy advanced type jacket, but it is a lightweight jacket with all the features you basically need for $100 or less, depending on if you get it on sale. All right, so now let's take a look at the compression of this bag. So I just took a moment to stuff it and here it is. Wait, 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 hold on. In the last filming, uh, I actually stuffed it wrong. Uh, it was a little tighter than I was remembering, and uh, this is the actual size. Um, so the pocket is bigger uh, than what I showed in the last one. Um, a part of it didn't get fully uh, untucked and got caught up. So it actually stuffs fairly easily, and the zipper does close very easily, um, and it could compress more than this. Um, but just know, this is the actual size. It actually is a square, like I initially said, uh, and this is also probably why I thought it makes a great pillow, because um, it's like the perfect size. Um, so just know that that other idiot who's talking uh, did it wrong. This is the actual size of the pocket for stuffing. Continue. This is it in all its glory. Uh, it stuffs into its uh, left pocket uh, from the inside, uh, and it does have a zipper. Uh, it is yellow, but this is the overall size. Now I'm gonna compare it real quick to my other down jacket. Um, this one is an actual down, 800 fill, more of a midweight. Uh, it's the Mont Bell Alpine Light uh, jacket. You'll see it uh, unpacked uh, at the end of this review um, in comparison. Um, uh, and it's, uh, what was I saying, four ounces. So it's kind of a midweight, and it's about the same size almost, a little bit taller, um, about about the same thickness almost, um, kind of. Um, and so just kind of a comparison of like down versus synthetic, like they're, they're pretty close to the same, um, and you get a lot more warmth uh, out of this one. And this one's totally compressed, like as, far, as much as it's gonna compress, and this one can still compress down a lot more depending on if I needed to. Um, so that's just, if you if you haven't done a lot of comparisons of down versus synthetic, down is way more compressible, it's a lot lighter, it's a higher warmth to weight ratio. This is what you're gonna get if you get the Tuolumne jacket. So to wrap this video up, my final thoughts on this jacket is for the price point, it's awesome. Um, again, assuming you're looking for something uh, that is a lightweight jacket, um, I, would, I would recommend it. Um, again, the, the comparison wise, the only thing that's comparable to it in price is the REI jacket, um, which you lose out on some key features um, for warmth and creature comfort. So the pockets and the bottom zip tie, um, or not zip tie, um, elastic cord. Um, and so I would choose this jacket over the REI one. Um, plus this one's on sale right now. If that sticks around, even better deal. Um, and so overall, 
great jacket. I like having two forms of jackets. So again, it's um, like I said, here's the Montbell one that I love. Um, definitely more of a midweight. It's a lot puffier, has more, you know, felt line pockets and hood and adjustable stuff. So it's definitely a more expensive jacket, um, but I really only wear it when camping. This one I'll wear to the store, I'll wear around the house. Um, definitely a lot more of a um, kind of everyday use as well as like a weekend camp trip. Uh, and again, assuming that you're not going really too much below, I would say 35 degrees Fahrenheit, um, then it's a great jacket. Um, and if you're going below that, then just know it's not the right tool for the job. That doesn't mean it's a bad jacket. So overall, I would say great jacket. Go check it out. Keep in mind that the colors are slightly darker than they look on the website. Aside from that, it's an awesome jacket. Um, I hope this review was helpful to you guys. If so, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more content like it as I put stuff out, uh, please subscribe. Um, and then if you have questions on this jacket specifically or, or anything really, uh, drop a comment below or message me. Uh, I'm pretty good about getting back to people. Um, and that concludes uh, this video. So thanks for stopping by. I hope it was helpful and I'll see you in the next video.